Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the A3 Review. Today, we're going to take a look at Iron Man 3 Igor from Hot Toys. And of course, we always have a tabletop segment for you guys. So what we're going to take a look at is Adventure Time Card Wars for all you Adventure Time fans. So my name is Alex. I'm Boris. And you're watching the, the A3, A3 Review. Review. Holy cow, look at this box. What do we have here in front of us, Boris? Uh, we have the Iron Man 3 Igor uh, from Hot Toys. It is huge. The last time I remember a huge box from Hot Toys from the Iron Man series was Iron Monger. This looks like it's just around the same scale. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then also, for those of you who haven't seen the Iron Monger, uh, most recently the Hulk. Uh, also was pretty big in scale, yeah. but still not quite as big as this box. It yeah. was slightly smaller than this. Yeah, um, it, uh, It's amazing. It's from his whole house protocol scene. House where, party protocol. Uh, yeah, sorry. House party protocol, my yeah. bad. Um, where he calls on all of his suits and this is one of them that uh, kind of comes out of the... I swear this is like Hot Toys is <laughs> like... They just allowed them to print money with, yes. with that whole <laughs> totally. Iron Man 3 thing. Yeah. What's uh, very interesting is that when we first saw uh, this Igor uh, show up on the trailers, a lot of people got excited because they thought it was the Hulkbuster. Mm -hmm. Apparently, this is not Hulk, Hulkbuster, this is Igor. Hulkbuster is coming out later on in a separate Hot Toys release for the release of Age of Ultron. And it's going to be even bigger. Probably yeah. will not fit on the screen here. No like, kidding. Uh, so, yeah, watch out for that one. That one is on pre-order. Um, it might be sold out right by now. It's ultra popular. Yeah. But uh, if you can get it, uh, I would highly recommend that. It's going to be hot. Yeah, all right. Well, anyways, let's take a look at the actual figure. Let's do that. And here is Igor out of the box, and wow, he's huge. He's really, really impressive in the details. And the first thing I notice is, of course, the lights. It's such a nice touch to add those lights on. It really brings this figure to life. Yeah, so like many of the Iron Man uh, series from Hot Toys, they all have, uh, like, his eyes light up, uh, the arc. Uh, reactor li lights up and then his hands also uh, light up uh, and on this guy it's actually even more impressive because the lights are like they're huge yeah <laughs> right? uh, so it really like shines um, yeah. I mean try turning off the lights and, and uh, just seeing like it, it looks menacing in the yeah. dark yeah um, not to say that that's what I do yeah. on a regular <laughs> basis, turn off lights and check out but toys. But still, you can imagine glowing. how awesome it would look with just the glowing eyes in the dark. Yeah, I, I mean, I was just joking, I did try that. <laughs> uh, my, my wife thought I was very weird. <laughs> um, but it is very impressive, and just so you kind of get a sense of why this is so impressive, I mean, the box says it all, it needs such a big box just to hold it. Uh, here's uh, the Tony Stark mechanic from the same series, uh, the Iron Man 3 movie, uh, and like, it just dwarfs it. Yes. Hard to believe that that's actually supposed to be a suit he gets into, but I guess the Ironmonger, I mean, yeah, kind of sit up in that suit as well. That's right. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely very, very impressive. And he's pretty much Hulk size, right? Like, Igor is Hulk size, right? Uh, yes. So uh, if uh, any of you guys do have the Hot Toys Hulk, it stands about the same height. Yeah. Uh, there's probably a little bit more bulk to mm -hmm. Igor. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's about the same. So yeah. if, you, if, if you can imagine, Hulkbuster is going to be kind of like towering over it. Yeah. Like that big, because it, <laughs> it has to be. It's, yeah. It's the Hulkbuster. Yeah. Um, uh, but one thing I did want to kind of draw attention to as well is, uh, unlike the Ironmonger though, there's actually quite a bit of articulation in Igor. Yeah. Uh, so you can pose him pretty aggressively. Probably not as aggressively as the rest of the Iron Man uh, suits. But I mean, it's it's such a bulky toy. You'd think that it's it's actually not uh, able to do much. But all the fingers, they're all uh, articulated. That's like there's, super impressive. Yeah, there's three points of articulation. Like there's, there's three joints in here that allow it to... Kind of get some very uh, dynamic poses, even in the thumb. 
um, and the, the, the whole fist is on a ball joint, yeah. so it can really give you that extra uh, dynamic to it. Also, they have some, you know, interesting moving parts. Yeah, like this, for example, like this right here. I don't know why, it, why it's there, but it, it, it moves. It slides up because it, this actually shows just how impressive the, uh, like if you look at the back yeah. uh, of the foot, all these come up. It's because when you actually get them in very dynamic poses, these flaps actually need to uh, move together, with, move it, right? together yeah. with the movement of your joints. Yeah. Even the feet here, you'll see how this is kind of the, the layering here. Yeah. They actually, these move kind of almost like um, uh, gills and or scales would kind yeah. of move on top of each other. Yeah. Uh, like this one looks a little bit different than this side because it, it moves to accommodate the articulation of the actual feet. Yeah. Uh, which is really necessary when you want to get into uh, uh, different poses with this figure. And so unlike Ironmonger, it actually has quite a bit more articulation uh, and uh, and a lot more detail For sure. on the back side here. It's really, really cool. You have these like moving plates these flaps, that yeah. almost make it almost like, uh, I guess, I almost want to say a reptilian like. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, it's very cool. The whole aesthetic of it, I would say, uh, you know, is very different from the uh, rest of the Iron Man series. Yeah. But it really, really is very cool. They, you know, whoever designed this one, uh, really put some organic thought into it. Mm -hmm. To me, it feels almost like this kind of hunched over turtle looking yeah. like armor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I love a lot of things you talked about, and especially the paint, the weathering, you have this metallic blue, but then you know that it's gone through a lot. It's done a lot of jobs, it's fought a lot of bad guys, and that's why you have this, 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 it all looks like paint scratching off of it, and it comes that way. And mm -hmm. it just makes the whole thing just look really, really great, to say the least, because, um, I mean, we got the articulation there, we got the great sculpt, and now they add that extra detail with all this paint kind of rubbing off it, and it looks fantastic. Yep. And just like you would expect from all the Iron Man uh, series, they hide the switches really well for all of the lighting. Yeah. Um, and then anything like this chest is actually set on magnets, which is really nice. Uh, yeah. So there's a switch there, and then the whole piece just kind of snaps back on. I like that because it doesn't feel like you're breaking it when yeah. you're taking yeah. it off. Yeah. There are other parts that feel a little bit more like that, but they actually snap on and snap off quite easily, like the headpiece. I'm gonna try not to do it right now, but uh, it actually just pops off, and then there's a little switch there. Yeah. Uh, same thing with the hands, there's little plates that cover yeah. the switch, and you just pop it off and uh, turn on the switch. In terms of getting to the switches on this figure, it's actually very, very easy on this figure. Maybe because it's so large in scale. I highly recommend it for any Iron Man fans, uh, or if you already collect the Iron Man series from Hot Toys, it just feels like even if you couldn't collect all the suits, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty expensive. Uh, this is actually one to have out of all of them. It just, it looks very unique and it feels very good. Totally agree. I mean, if you already have a couple of uh, Iron Man suits and you know it's that standard looking Iron Man suit, which is, you know, the, the standard look, right? It's just a different paint job. Add this guy to your collection to add that diversity. It really shows that Tony Stark does have all kinds of suits and this is definitely evidence to that. So this is a must have for any diehard Iron Man Hot Toys collector. Agreed. And there you have it. That is our little spotlight on the Hot Toys Iron Man 3 Igor. Check it out at www.urbansamuraihobbies.com. Uh, they are going quick though, uh, so and I think there's actually only very few left. So if you want it, now's the time. Okay, so it's that time again where we talk about tabletop games. And in front of us today, we have Adventure Time Card Wars. And we just played this. Yeah, we did. It's it's actually very interesting. It's kind of like magic, isn't it? Yeah, you know what? Being, like a, being a competitive magic player, um, this was a pretty easy game to learn and pick up. Um, of course, there were more simplistic mechanics involved, but you know that makes sense in a way because you want it to be a pick up and play kind of game. I found it enjoyable. 
you were saying it kind of incorporated some Yu-Gi-Oh kind of elements as well, right? So it's like almost yeah. like a, a birth child of Yu-Gi-Oh slash magic slash general deck building slash drafting. The the biggest game. yeah the biggest portion of that being is that one is um, you have restricted spaces, so you can only play a certain number of cards in your hand in the board. Like Magic the Gathering doesn't have any limitations in terms of what you can put down on your side of the board. Uh, this one definitely does only four spaces for your creatures. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh had this mechanic. I don't know if it still exists. I haven't played that in a very long time, but they only had a limit of five creatures. So this kind of takes that place where you know, it's, it's a set board is what it is. It kind of feels like for the people who are intimidated by magic, this would be their answer because it's a simplified version of it. I mean, it didn't take us that long to learn it. Uh, and I'm, I'm someone who's never touched magic at all. Uh, and this wasn't that hard to learn actually. So um, I had a pretty decent time with it. I mean, it's a simple game. It, it's a pick up and play game, right? It doesn't have a lot of depth to it, but it still can be strategic. Yeah, and what I liked about it is the theme. I mean, Adventure Time is a very popular <laughs> um, mainstream cartoon targeted mainly for kids, but there's definitely a lot of adult humor in it. And that's why it's a great range uh, in terms of all audiences. Yeah, so for you, those of you that haven't seen uh, Adventure Time, this is actually based on an episode yeah. of Adventure Time where they play Card Wars. And uh, for those of you who haven't seen the show at all, um, it's just totally insane. Yeah. Uh, it, it's an interesting, uh, funny yet scary uh, TV show. Um, but uh, just a quick rundown for those who don't understand what we're talking about with magic and drafting games. Um, you basically uh, get five cards each. Uh, you duel it out on these, what? Eight? Uh, landscapes. Eight landscapes. Yeah. Uh, each player kind of gets four landscapes. Uh, and basically, uh, through these cards, you put down creatures and buildings, and they attack each other in kind of an attack, defense kind of scenario, yeah. uh, minusing points off of each creature, thus either removing the creature from the board or just kind of hurting it. Uh, and ultimately, you want to remove creatures and deal attack damage to your opponent. Yeah, and your opponent has a maximum health point of uh, 25. So once they're down to zero, game's over. So it plays out about in 30 minutes after after uh, that, or less maybe? Yeah, I would say even less. Yeah. Um, there are mechanics in the game that make it very linear. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing is that uh, you have, it's the, the battle mechanic has to be uh, where your opponent's creatures must be right across from yours, otherwise they just go right through. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but at the same point, it makes it very simple. Yeah. So it's really easy to pick up. And, you know, if you're thinking that this is gonna be some complex uh, deck building slash drafting game, it really isn't. It's uh, got a lot of fun factor to it, and I think yeah. there's a reason for that. They didn't want to make this too heavy, so it's a great intro to this style of gaming. And especially if you like Adventure Time, uh, it's gonna make you chuckle a little bit. Some of the cards themselves are a little bit insane. Um, and uh, speaking of that, there is actually uh, booster cards, just like in a, a game like Magic, you can actually buy booster cards and enhance your decks. Um, I think uh, each one looks like it comes with uh, how many? No idea. Uh, no nine idea. cards per pack. Nine, nine, cards. nine cards per pack. Yeah. Um, and then you can get, like, this, there's also this add on, this hero pack. And it uh, looks like it includes a whole bunch of heroes. Um, uh, and then also, you, know, you got these uh, expansions which allow you to add more cards. So at the end of the day, it adds a lot of replayability. With all these expansion and additional cards, you're gonna have never ending fun with all the different combinations you could use in your deck. Yeah, just a heads up though, it is a two player game. Uh, you don't play more than two players. Uh, however, uh, a lot of uh, people have been uh, complaining that actually there's a lack of 
good two-player games. So this is actually something you might want to get into if uh, you don't always have a whole crowd of people. You just have a couple people at home, or you're, you're you know home with uh, your girlfriend slash boyfriend one evening, wife slash husband. Uh, this is great to to pick up. Yeah, and if you want to be playing any of these games or you want to check them out, be sure to come by A3U, that would be Ages 3 and Up at Lougheed Mall on Wednesday nights for our board game night. Yeah, we start at 6, so be here on time and uh, you can uh, play from a selection of our board games or whatever our regulars are uh, playing as well. And that's our episode for today, we hope you enjoyed it. Next week, the Transformers are back. We're going to take a look at Combiner Wars Wave 1 Superion. That's right, and after that, we have some more tabletop goodness for you guys. We're going to show you guys some more fun games. So, as always, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, Ages 3 and Up, and also follow us on Twitter at Ages 3 and Up. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Later.